Well met everyone, I am Rich DeLich. Today is another Ramble Rich video. My intention here is just to simply talk about logos in a medieval world. What am I talking about? You have iconic logos that you will see on screen. There's Disney, Coca-Cola, you have Nike, you have Apple. These are iconic symbols. Now, if I was to pull them up, what makes them work? Okay, let's take a look at it and let's sort of obsess about and digest what makes those logos work in today's age and modern time. And then what I will do is I will talk about how we can use those attributes of Design 101 to create amazing logos in a medieval setting and what does that even mean? So let's first take a look at the Disney logo. I have it on my screen here. You're seeing it on the little pop up here. When we look at Disney, we see that there's this cursive sort of script. Let's remember that. Let's remember what that means and what sort of audience that resonates with. Now, if we look at Coca-Cola, that's just a very iconic. If you didn't know the brand in and of itself, pretend you're sort of separated. You've been living in space on another world. You're in the Fae of modern time and you've never seen it before. There is nothing here with, between the red and the script, the cursive font that screams to us soda or anything like that, right? But it's just stood the test of time. It's iconic. The font of it, the this cursive script and just the amount of flourish that that font has is very identifiable. It's not Arial font or you know the, the things that you'll often see in normal bold headings or things like that So it's not used very easily if you were to take the same thing with Google Let's say those letters just the letter forms and the shapes themselves are much more easily replicated But because Google has that sort of color scheme between each letter being those those colors That is what sort of makes it the identifier so we have these two sort of cursive scripts and how they work and what that audience is. When I get over to Photoshop and I show you how we can start designing for medieval logos, how these cursive fonts sort of lend themselves towards a certain aesthetic, but also they elicit a certain emotion or a certain association from us. So let's take a look at the other two where we have the Nike symbol and the Apple symbol, two very iconic logos, right? They're very readable. If you were to look back at the original two of Disney and Coca-Cola, and now you look at these two with Apple and Nike, notice that the symbols are very identifiable. Once again, because of the cursive fonts of Disney and Coca-Cola, you're gonna easily identify sort of just the flourishes of that cursive handwriting, just as you would with the bold graphic element of the Nike symbol and the Apple symbol. It's just easily readable from a distance. Now, why does that matter and why am I talking about these modern day iconic brands and how does that translate into a D&D &D space? Let me show you. So as we get over into Photoshop here, what I'm gonna show you is I'm just gonna show you a couple of simple, simple things very quickly. Okay, if I was to draw this here. Okay, I'm just writing that in sort of cursive handwriting, right? R whatever, sloppy, I can flourish it and create, you know, a bunch more calligraphy kind of nuances and, and things like that going on, right? But that Terminator font has a very wedding feel, right? And what I mean is it's cursive, when we think wedding and we think of what's on a wedding invite and you have this this sort of elegance to it, it makes sense because you're looking at, you know, a loving thing. You're looking at a relationship between one another. another. They want to share their relationship, their love, their compassion. They want to share that with you. Whereas Terminator, it needs to be a lot more... You know, as I'm drawing it, I can even think of right. Obviously, here we're getting into a little more graffiti, but when the Terminator movie poster trailer comes out, I'm talking way back Arnold Schwarzenegger '80s, right? It feels strong, right? It it feels gritty and grimy and futuristic and metal and steel and rough around the edges. Okay, the best example, if I was to take where I'm going with this into a fantasy element, is look at Lord of the Rings and dwarven architecture and the behind the scenes of Peter Jackson's Lord of the Rings. 
the dwarven motifs and what we'll often still see even now in Dungeons and Dragons and things like that, you know, is you're going to have a dwarven rune, okay? And there's going to be just very sort of geometric shapes to it. And this could be maybe some sort of a floor pattern, right? And you're going to have these boxes and you just have this general feeling and this look of just very hard, rigid edges, very sharp lines. But if you think about the disposition and the demeanor of a dwarf, you're rough around the edges, right? It's broad shoulder, very stocky, very squat, very box-like, you know, sort of stubborn thinking, so very confined. Whereas if you contrast that with the elven architecture and the elven motif and design scheme that was shown on the robes and their leather armor and it was scrawled on the handles and embossed and engraved into the weapons and you know the the blade itself had these various design elements you're thinking rivendell you're thinking elves they almost have this ethereal quality this spiritual quality this otherworldly flowing essence so therefore you're going to see these motifs and these design elements that are very smooth and very round and sort of they interweave you know whether that's a natural thing where i remember behind the scenes when they were talking about building rivendell and sort of building it within if you have this tree and you've got this you know with these branches they wanted to build the architecture yes i know you have some hard lines because you need foundation you need framing but they still built the architecture of this building into the 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 elegance and the flow of the tree so you have just that very iconic from back in Tolkien, where, yes, I understand that's Peter Jackson's vision of it, but you have this very distinct standard between elegance and that sort of nature flowing aspect, and then you have the very hard geometric shape of dwarves. So if we were to think about the Disney logo and we were to think about the Coca-Cola and the script and the cursive, that's going to indicate something to us. So when you're designing logos, and this is, you know, I know it's seven, eight minutes in before I finally get to the point, but when you're designing logos, which is basically the heraldry, the coat of arms, the marks of religions, faiths, organizations, groups, first you want to think, who are you trying to elicit a response from? You know, are you appealing just as Disney might appeal to kids? Who are you trying to draw in? If it's a natural very druidic, very nature, perhaps even benevolent, good aligned faith or organization. You may see a lot of sort of concentric circles and, you know, shapes like this and a lot of things kind of flowing in this regard and moving in. And I'm just kind of drawing now, but you might see that sort of iconography. Whereas if you're looking a little more evil, you know, think of Forgotten Realms and Bane and Siric and whatnot, you've got just this gnashiness, this unwelcoming hard edge spike that's a christmas tree but you've got these hard edges to a lot of these things right and you've got these chains coming off and there's just blood drops and you know and yes you have these elegant shapes within the blood drops and stuff like those are figure eights but you have these various shapes but you kind of you can find them to this just hard edge this box and what these things do and when you start thinking in that fashion and just the same as with the Apple and the Nike symbol, where it's readable from distance. Why does that matter? When your PCs are approaching a castle and all they can see is the banners hanging from that castle, you want something immediately recognizable, right? You want to be able to identify, is this a good place? Is this a bad place? If it's supposed to be this sort of elegant shape and you've got these leaves around the outside and it's this magical i'm going to erase this i'm going to clean it up a little bit but if it's this magical rune of some legendary dwarven or uh, elven mages right and you have these those are not really leaves at all so let me fix this and you have this sort of this sort of motif right and you see this. And you have these leaves, right? And we're just continuing that pattern. And then you have it all onto sort of a, you know, some sort of a, a tapestry, if you will, right? And it can be, you know, torn and whatever else. 
okay? And we'll move it down into here. And you see this sort of banner over the side of a wall, and that's your castle. It To me, it looks like magical runes. It looks elven. It looks like it could be nature, druid, you know, is this divine magic, some, some druid place. But then imagine you're approaching from distance, okay? And I'll get into how we can relate this to the Nike and the Apple symbol. You approach from distance, and instead you now see this sort of hard-edged, right? And you've got these sort of chains. These are going to be really large links, but bear with me here. You've got this going on, okay? And you've got this, you know, weird rune, but now we're looking into more of like a like like a pentagram symbol or something like this. So let's just create this circle. And I would obviously, if I'm creating these logos for my world, I would clean them up a lot, you know, but I've got this kind of crazy gnashiness going on. And then I'm going to take this bold edge, just like we talked about with the Terminator font. And I'm going to take this bold line, and I've got just these big, bold, really hard edges. You know, this real graphic design element. And now if I see something like this, right? But let's say I've got this even bigger, just this really big, gnashy. You see what I mean? So you approach the same building, but now you have this guy is hanging over the side of the building. Obviously, it's a different coat of arms, Mark, right? Someone took over the fortress that we're supposed to go to, but you immediately have a little bit more of a sinister, dark, maybe evil feeling to it, okay? And of course, you can make it blood and, you know, more spikes and, you know, giant right here. Once we get into this, we're now kind of creating this demon horn motif, right? So now you're thinking evil and, you know, just gnashy darkness and whatever. Okay, we've got this going on and we don't know what this is, but it doesn't, it's not as nearly, you know, is that a raven? Is that a bird? It's not nearly as welcoming, right? It doesn't have that elegance and the bold lines and just, you know, that decor. So when you're creating your factions, your logos, you often want to accompany it with images, of course. We want to create heraldry and marks and coat of arms. Just think of how your players will respond to any given visual. And where we get into the Nike and the Apple one, you want something to read well at distance and you want it to be somewhat simple. I know these are a lot more intricate, but if you can simplify that shape, and what I would do is I would almost blacken this in a little more so that it reads. Okay, I'm not even probably going to get rid of the chains entirely and I'll just leave this and I don't mind this sort of possible circle pentagram, but I will still sort of get rid of, you know, grunge it up a little bit, get rid of a lot of it. And then I'm just going to get rid of the chains entirely. We don't need these. So that it doesn't get muddled when I Zoom out at distance. I still want to be able to identify. Just look at that. That's how small that is. I can still see what's going on there. But also another identifier is color. If I was to simply just make this sort of filled in in a bunch of red in various places, that's going to stand out for me. And that's all I need to see, you know, is just the color of these things. And I'm going to know immediately what we're dealing with. Like, oh, guys, this got taken over by some horrible Nashi orc clan. Let's stay away. How do you know? Well, don't you see the the red? You know, the blood, right? It's the blood orcs. Whereas, obviously, if I was to go in here and start using pastels or something like this and create this sort of decor and this color and this motif, you know, through it, you know, just sort of frayed and fringed at the edges like I would embroider on a robe. From distance, one thing reads one way and the other reads another way. So when you're creating your groups, your factions, accompany accompany them with beautiful visuals so that you can immediately identify when a cleric is wearing them on the vestment on the on their vestments, when there are banners that are being hung up, when they're marching quickly, full speed with their cavalry at distance, 
who is who are you identifying with what and try and keep it simple and think of how logos read so i'll kind of bring it all together in a final few thoughts look at the cursive the disney they're appealing to younger audiences right their movies disneyland fun play so it has much more of a playful element to it okay and then if you look at something that's readable like apple and nike something from distance something that doesn't have too many little knickknacks and details sticking off the edges of it you have something that you identify very quickly as this is a horrible bad thing you know i want that or i don't want to go there i should say you know so there you want to make it identifiable at distance and that's where you might get something like this going on okay so that's just kind of my mind on paper as all my ramble rich where i'm just rambling about how i can take the ideas and sort of the principles of graphic design in modern day logos and why they work and why things have stood the test of time like coca-cola for over 100 years and how i can apply that to my coat of arms my heraldry the marks on my shields the marks on my various soldiers in my standing militia what banners are hanging on what kingdoms and whatnot so there you go that's all i've got for you folks today there's some big reviews coming up pretty soon here i've got a big book on dragon grin that i'm gonna be purchasing whenever that's released and the upcoming DD book official watsi product that releases i believe pretty soon here within two three weeks so that's all i've got for you folks thank you all for watching take care